Welcome everyone to Planetary Meditation. Like Sneha said, we're really excited to see everyone here. So I'm going to share my screen and we're going to be going to menti.com. All right, so um, for menti.com, we, uh, if you can sign in, the passcode is uh, 32689586. And I believe uh, Ishita is going to share that in the chat. So if you just came, um, you might have entered when we had the newcomer introduction video. So we have that showing the first 15 minutes uh, prior to the start of planetary meditation. So it's great if you're inviting somebody that hasn't um, come to planetary meditation before, or maybe it's new to meditation, just a great introduction video. And then we'll do our welcome, which includes me, and uh, we'll always include our menti poll. And then we'll follow with the kirtan and chanting meditation, followed by guided meditation. And then we'll have an inspirational share and open conversation. And um, so today, this, uh, this past month, we've been talking about our theme has been core spiritual concepts. And this week, we've been talking about um, integrating spirituality in life. So that will, will be our inspirational share today that we'll kind of cover that. So looking, really looking forward to that. Um, so now on to the active participation of everyone. We want to know which part of the world you're in. So if you can log in to menti.com and uh, access the code and let us know where you're at in the world right now. So we've got United States, Canada, Vietnam, Vietnam, Colombia, fantastic. Looks like the United States is the largest group here so far. Give everybody another minute or two. Great to see everyone here. And we've got Brazil, Mexico, fantastic. All right, that's wonderful. Welcome everyone. All right, so we'd love to know how many years you've been meditating. So we've got the option of less than one year, one to five years and over five years. And again, everyone's welcome here. So it looks like we've got one person under one year, uh, two between one and five years, and I would be in that group of one to five years. And then we've got six experienced meditators. So that's wonderful. Can all share within this experience great okay now how long do you meditate per day meditation so I'd like to know kind of an average of how long you you know especially if you meditate twice a day so you can add that up i definitely try to get over 40 minutes a day but sometimes i fall short So it looks like we've got three people between 11 and 20, three between 20 and 40, and four people 40 minutes a day. That's wonderful. I mean, I tell people even five minutes once a day, twice a day is even a, a great start. So fantastic, everyone. All right. How do you feel now? So we want to see where everybody's at before we start our program. So everybody's doing this morning. So we've got in love, excited, happy, blessed, optimistic, calm, tired, bored, sad, confused, and anxious. I'm always happy and feel blessed to be here. Oh, we've got one person feeling anxious. We've got a person feeling calm. Three people feeling optimistic. Oh, four people feeling optimistic, but two people feeling anxious. Five feeling blessed. Two happy. Two excited. Two in love and one person tired. Looks like we got some more feeling blessed. Fantastic. 
just good to see check in where we're all at before we start with uh, our program today. All right. So next we're gonna um, I'm gonna hand it back over to Sneha and we'll start with our uh, kirtan or chanting meditation followed by our guided meditation and then we will have a uh, inspirational share and then we'll meet back together again to see where everybody's at. All right, so enjoy the uh, the music.
Keep your eyes closed. Remember to sit straight and breathe through your nose. Let the mantra Bhavanam Kevalam continue in your mind as though you are listening to it. Feel that you are watching your thoughts and hearing the mantra and the music as it plays on in your mind. Then begin to feel that this mantra and the music is like a voice coming from within you, as though your inner self were singing to you. And feel that this music and the mantra is drawing your attention inward, is leading you to this inner place where the feeling of love comes from. You're connecting to that feeling of love within yourself. And as you come to that place, where, you, where, where love is generated, notice how it has no limit, it has no boundary. If 
you're in this place of limitless love. The mantra is continuing in your mind with the music. If your mind wanders at any moment, don't worry, that's quite natural. When you notice that, just bring your attention back to the mantra and the music. And we'll meditate in silence like this now.
Baba Nam Kevalam, only the feeling of infinite love. I want to bring you back to the consciousness of this world and we can continue our session with inspirational talk. So it is very nice to see all of you here today and uh, know that you are making it like a priority to be in this um, in a spiritual program. As it's a Saturday morning for some of you, but maybe it is uh, evening for some others. So this week, we were emphasizing integrating spirituality in our life. You know, there are two extremes. One is the people who only live a material life. So they're only thinking about their job and uh, their career or money or family, something in the material world. So that's one extreme. But there is also the other extreme, people who ignore the society and they think only about spiritual and they spend all the time maybe meditating, reading spiritual things and forgetting about the world. So these two extremes are there. But the most important is to bring that together, to integrate our life in the world and our spiritual life. Because the world, the material things are also an expression of the same infinite consciousness. So we cannot neglect it. If we neglect it, it's like we are leaving part of that infinite and we are only taking another part. But if we want the whole, we cannot ignore any part of it. So it's very important to keep this balance. And um, so we addressed different topics during the week. We were asking you, how does your family feel about your spiritual lifestyle? Because sometimes that's one of the difficulties that we face. The people close to us, they don't accept or they don't adjust with our spiritual lifestyle. So it is normal. Uh, my experience is that when I was in Brazil, before I became a monk, I was in my family and they didn't like what I was doing. They were saying, I'm wasting my time, my energy and everything. But now, you see, so many years have passed. And uh, when, when I saw them after 30 years, they were all positive. They were all asking questions and they wanted to know more. So just keep in mind that the things change. You know, according to time, people also start understanding. What about our friends? That's also another difficulty. Sometimes they don't understand. For example, I experienced the same. I had lots of friends and when I started meditating, they would uh, feel a little bit distant. And you know, I also, uh, we used to go to bars with the friends and then I started meditating and then I, I stopped uh, drinking and I changed my lifestyle. 
And then when I used to meet them, because I used to think, oh, let me go. At least I meet them in a bar, but I'm not going to drink, but I just see them. So I used to visit to come. And when I see them, suppose they are drinking, they have a glass of something in their hand. When they see me, they will put it behind on the table and they will just be there. So even if we, our friends are not on that flow, but we are giving an example to them that things can be different. We are also asking you, what's your favorite place for meditation? Because even at home, it's good to have a spot that you meditate. The moment you reach there, the moment you sit there, the mind already gets ready for meditation. And maybe you have some place in the park or some place around your house that you can sit and meditate. If you keep that place special for meditation, when you come there, it um, helps you to go deeper. You know, all these we were talking in the spiritual community that we created online because you are in different places. So we want to keep you connected. So we created this space. So I encourage more of you to use it. There are not uh, too many people participating at the moment. So more people participate, more sharing, more we can benefit for it, from it. Now, we also asked you, what is the difference between walking in the forest and meditation? Both are good. It's good to walk in the forest. You can replenish your energy and it can make it easier to meditate. But really meditating is to disconnect from the world and really go deep within. And that is needed. You don't need to do too much. I mean, let's say you are doing twice a day, every day, that's, that's okay. And then you can utilize the rest of your time in other activities. So this walking in nature, I would really recommend. It's a very important thing. And whenever you find a chance, connect with nature. So these were themes that we were using to stimulate that idea that you can integrate day spiritual life with your day-to-day -day life. And you know, even when you are at work, keep the mantra going in your mind. Or if you are going, if you can listen to music at work, play the mantra. So all that will keep your mind in a different state. The more we encourage spirituality, the more it becomes our nature. And uh, we start reacting naturally in a deeper way to circumstances in our life. So that is what I wanted to share with you that we are choosing different themes for every week to encourage development in that part. It's like a, emphasizing a certain aspect each week and we use the community to keep you engaged. And uh, also we give our opinions and if you ask questions, we can reply. So it becomes something that is not only once a week, but it also goes through the week. And if any, any of you don't know how to connect in the community or forgot it, we'll put the link there in the chat so that you can remember. And that's what I wanted to share. And if you have any questions, I'm open for it. Thank you. Namaskar. Namaskar. So Krishna Prema has some slides to share with us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dada. Thank you, Sneha. Um, so we're going to go back to our, um, well, first of all, that was wonderful hearing from Dada. And uh, I believe Ashita did share the link in the chat. 
And we are going to go back to uh, the menti.com. So I'm going to share my screen. Full screen. All right. So it looks like somebody's already answered the question. How do you feel after meditation? So give everybody a minute or two to log back in. Fantastic. So we got three people feeling in love, one excited, three happy, four blessed, three optimistic, and three calm, four happy. I know me, I'm feeling a little bit on the calm side, but very blessed that we're here right now and getting to listen to such inspiring, inspiring message from Dada and sharing all this with everyone. Even though we're not in person, it's just, I still feel that very strong connection with everybody sitting here on Zoom. And it's pretty amazing that we're all over the globe and I'm on an island out in the middle of the Pacific. <laughs> so pretty amazing. And, and we don't so, have any anxious anymore. No, no anxious and no tired. <laughs> so that's good. That's always a positive. All right, so we'll go to the next screen. Do you have any questions? So they can be, uh, you know, any questions, any questions about what we just, the, what Dada just went over, some of the topic, about how to integrate spirituality into your life. Give everybody a couple minutes to, here we go. So Dada, we have, how can I share my new spiritual path with my family so they can better understand? Yeah, that is uh, one of the tough things. I think first, we need to be uh, like an example. If they see that uh, there has been a change in us, that will be very positive. And even if they sometimes are opposing it, but they see that you are benefiting, they lose the force to oppose, so they become a bit more accepting. And uh, one thing we shouldn't do, you mean this is a no, 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 don't try to convince them, you know, by forcing them, forcing it on them. People, in general, people don't like that. It means that you are always talking about it, always preaching it, the people usually if you go on defense mode and then they will not accept. So I would say that the most important being an example. And second, if you ever talk about it, present it, be not, don't be imposing. And uh, have patience that sometimes it takes time. You know? So that's what I can do. I can say for this one. Thank you. That's wonderful. Yeah, something Donna Mahesh said, said last, last week, too, was about just inviting and leaving the invitation open. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I the next question is, when teaching friends the mantra and meditation, and they say they get bored after a while, what can I say or do to help them go deeper? Yeah. What happens sometimes is the people are not really ready. And also they want an immediate result because in, the, in general in the world, when people look for some, something to make them feel better, they want something immediately. Like they go to a restaurant, the food is very good and they read, oh, great. Immediately you taste and you feel some satisfaction or you go to a movie and oh, great movie, and it has some immediate impact. And uh, we are used to things that change all the time. You know, like, let's take example of the movie again. The movie, in a movie, if you notice, especially the new ones, the scene changes very quickly. In older movies, you can notice that one scene can go for a long time, but the new ones, the scenes are very fast. And the mind 
present mind is adjusted to this changing, everything changes. So it really needs um, a preparation for meditation, maybe an environment, maybe you go out with them, uh, take a walk in the nature, and after you walk a long time, you arrive in a nice place, then you sit there, and then you say, okay, let's meditate for five minutes. And if they taste uh, in any opportunity, if they taste the feeling of meditation, then meditation will become meaningful to them. You know, if they don't taste that, like the environment they are at the time they are meditating or that situation is not something that's conducive to go inside, then they will not get the feeling. So look for some opportunity that you can go with them on some activity. And in a pause in that activity, you propose, okay, this is beautiful place. Let's meditate five minutes. Try that. See if you can give them at least once the taste of meditation. If they taste once, then after that, their mind will have some desire to reach to that. And then they can practice with more concentration. That's going to be my suggestion. That's a wonderful idea. I think I'm going to put that into action. Thank you. Next question is, what is our proper behavior with other spiritual practices? I think we should respect everyone's spiritual practice and even encourage them, you know, like practice more. If they ask about our practice and they want to try it, we can be open to that. But at, on the other side, we encourage them in whatever spiritual practice they have. And even suppose they meditate with another technique and like that, you can even meditate with them. They do their technique, you do yours. So always encourage people in their spiritual practices and respect it. Unless they go against you, uh, you, you know, then you have to see how to mitigate the conflict and like that. But in general, a respect and encouragement that, that will do better than go into argument, uh, which is better, which is worse. So that, that never really works. Yeah. Thank you. Very valuable. All right. So I'm going to move on to the next slide. Would you share an experience? So if anyone would uh, share an experience again, everything's anonymous. So we'd love to hear an experience you have to share. Give everybody a few minutes to type something in. Okay, so my family and friends are most are not spiritualist. Nobody meditates or practices yoga. So I had to make new friends to integrate spiritually into my life. I love these new friends, even though most of them are virtual. <laughs> That's beautiful. I kind of feel the same way. <laughs> Thank you. I can tell a short story as people are writing. That would be wonderful, Dada. You know, once I was invited by one meditator who was a sitar player and he had organized like a concert. And then he invited me to speak in that uh, place where he was having a concert. Now, the thing is that he thought that because he plays sitar like this, but there were other groups playing different kinds of music. So it was a very mixed atmosphere. And uh, when I arrived to speak, some rock music had just finished. So people were really in another flow and everybody was talking loud and this and that. So this uh, person was very embarrassed and said, oh, dad, I invited you to speak, but this is not a good environment. I said, well, let's see, you know, let's at least uh, I came here all the way. So I should at least uh, make an effort to talk to them. So he went there, took the microphone and said, okay, I, uh, 
And he was, oh, I want to in, uh, present my friend, Dada. He will talk about meditation. And people were looking around and like this. So I sat down and I closed my eyes and I started meditating. And as I was meditating, I felt that the, the noise is reducing, reducing, reducing. And then it, there was silence. And then I, I opened my eyes and I spoke a little bit about meditation and it was very well received. And then after the, the thing, he came to me and said, Dada, what kind of power did you use? <laughs> I said, no, it's no power. It's just, I would say, it's, it, it, because everybody deep inside they are looking for something and uh, they can also feel the vibration you know of meditation so in that way uh, that was an interesting experience with a group that you would not think they would be at all interested in meditation but they were you know? so we'll be surprised that yes. uh, some people that we don't think they might be interested yeah that's fantastic. So we've got wonderful flow of love from the relatively new friends from around the world. That's wonderful. And then we also have, it's been amazing the encouragement you receive when you answer a question. I realize I'm being listened and I was a person of importance. That's wonderful to hear. Yes. Somebody said yes. And then we have, when I find beautiful flowers and walks, I breathe in their fragrance and say to my mantra and feel the connection to infinity beautiful too thank you it's wonderful thank you everyone for sharing your experiences and thank you dada we have one more slide and um so if anyone would like to share uh, any feel like they have any difficulties with their meditation or just have some questions uh here's a great opportunity use dada here as a great resource everybody another minute or two to type in their oh here we go I'm having difficulty finding a quiet place in my living situation. Any suggestions? Right. Okay. So, okay. I'm sure you are making the effort. You are trying to, you're looking for a place. Okay. You're not finding. One suggestion could be, let's say that you uh, you want to do meditation when you come home, okay? You come home from work or you come home from school and you want to do meditation and then you arrive home and you can't find a place, right? Suppose you are facing such situation. You can do the meditation before you arrive home, okay? So just to stop somewhere, maybe you are driving the car or maybe you are on a subway or something or on a train, bus, Maybe there is a park on the way somewhere that you can go there first and do meditation, then you go home. And then eventually when you are, you can be carving your space. Maybe you prepare one corner, you know, maybe you have kids and you arrive home and the kids are making a big mess and you cannot meditate. In the same way, you, you may try to, find a place outside that's not far from your home where you can go for a short while or do your meditation and come back. And then you work on always working on finding a place, a spot, a corner, somewhere you could find for a meditation. Yeah. Yeah. Karun just wrote, I have often meditated on the commuter train going home after work. Yeah. That also works. Yeah. Because when you arrive home, you already did that meditation, you're already feeling refreshed. Then you can uh, mix with the people in your household who may be waiting for you to immediately ask you something and then you don't find the moment to meditate. I have to deal with the chickens in my backyard. That's been my uh, <laughs> distraction, <laughs> the roosters. All right, um, the next one is, I'm having trouble trying to stay focused while, when, med when I'm meditating. This is, uh, happens with everyone, you know, it's an effort. So we make the effort. One thing that could help, I'm not sure if you tried, you sing the mantra before, okay? So before you start meditating silence, 
you sing the mantra aloud. So you put the song, Baba Nanke Balam, then you keep repeat, singing with it. And you know, I'm, you, some of you know, for some of you, you don't know, that is also a dance or a movement that you do when you sing the mantra, okay? This is called Lalita Mamika. We can also share a link for it in, our, in the community or like that, so you can learn it. That helps. So suppose you are, because when you are doing that dance, your body is engaged, your hands in different positions, your legs. So your whole body is getting the flow of meditation. Plus you sing, when you sing, you're using your vocal cord and you're also hearing it with your ears. So you are engaging most of your motor and sensory organs with the mantra. Then you sit down and try to focus, make the effort to focus. It, it will facilitate. And next week, we have another theme that we are going to talk about and that also will help you to meditate deeper. Okay, so, but don't be discouraged. Keep, keep making the effort, all right? Thank you, thank you, Dada, I appreciate that. That was wonderful. All right, so I'm gonna stop share, brings us to into our mentee. And um, so for next week, uh, the topic of the week is gonna be service and selflessness. So we, like Dada said, we hope you'll join us on the community and each day we'll be posting um, questions and polls and be sharing a video midweek. And then we also, for anyone that wants to rewatch um, the video from today of Dada sharing um, on the topic of the week, uh, we'll be posting that also on Sunday. So you're welcome to share that amongst your friends. We want to spread the message around the world. So, and if you would take a, uh, a minute or so and fill out the uh, poll so we can get some feedback because we're always trying to improve things. And again, we just really appreciate you everybody being here. And always I leave you with the challenge that uh, spread the message, invite people to join the community, to join us here for planetary meditation. We like seeing more of you each time and seeing people from all over the world. It's always fantastic and beautiful. And uh, again, we wish you a wonderful week. And uh, thank you for taking the time to fill out the poll. Thank you everybody. And I hope to join you more often. Happy to see you, thank you. Mm. Namaskar. Namaskar.